We're going to be taking a look at the use transition hook, which is new in the experimental React release. Now to start off, I want to take a look at how we currently load new data in. So this is what our application looks like. And I have this button here called refresh data. And when I click it, what happens is we can see the data loads in here and then the data actually comes in. Now my API here requests go super fast so I can slow it down by opening up the network tab and going to slow 3G and we can see both of these load in and then we get the information. Now what the use transition hook allows us to do is delay that transition. So we can actually show some stale data for a little bit before we transition to the next uh, state. So let's see this in action. How do we actually do that? Well, we're going to import the use transition hook from React. And we're going to say use transition. And this takes an object as a uh, parameter here. And inside of it, we can set a timeout in milliseconds. So we can set uh, when we want the transition to happen at a max length. So for example, we can set five seconds or two seconds or even one second. It depends on your application, what you're gonna to wanna to do. But basically, if it takes longer than one second to load, it's just gonna to go to the next state. And you'll see what I mean by this in a second. Uh, but for, for us to start off here, I'm gonna put it at five seconds. And then here, I'm gonna say start transition, and this is going to be a function. So now I have the on click of my button here which is updating the resource and that's how we're loading the new data in. So this state update is the one that I want to transition and wait on. So here I'm gonna say start transition and it takes a function as its parameter here and we just in our function body put the state update. And so now it's gonna happen and we can see this over here in action. So I'm gonna slow this down is I push refresh data and now you'll notice nothing changed and then all of a sudden we can see the new data arrive here. So what we've just accomplished is we're now not showing any loading state in between, right? And we can go back to just online. And we can click this again, we can watch this, right? And it just goes to the next thing. Now this timeout is the thing that we can play with. So for example, these are load these are two async calls that load in at different times. So for example, I can set a low threshold, for example, one second. So what's gonna happen is we can see this in action here, is when I push this refresh data button, after a second, if they both have not loaded in, it's just going to display the loading indicator. So I press refresh data, and we can see it takes a second. You see we see no loading indicator for this guy, and this guy loads for a second longer. Now, with this tactic, you'll notice that we're basically showing stale data for a little bit, and we want to be able to also show like a loading indicator to tell them that, hey, you click this button, we actually are loading data. So we can actually do that. The second parameter of this use uh, transition in this array that we have here is, is pending. And so this will tell us if we are pending a transition or a state update. And so we can do something like this. This is just the body of the button here, All right? We can put it in here if we want to. So we can say if we are pending, we can say loading. Otherwise, we can display an empty string. So now the result of that is when I press this button, we can see we are loading and then it actually goes to the next state transition. And again, with this, maybe we want a longer timeout, for example, like three seconds and save this. And this may be a smoother transition. So refresh data, it's loading in, and then we get that new data and it displays here. So with these suspense and use transitions and these new things that they're introducing, uh, I feel like they're really pushing us to build what they consider better UIs and better or more I guess this is a more complex UI to build something like this. And so they're giving us tools to be able to build stuff like this, which is pretty fun. So let's talk about one more thing about this. And that is how we can actually, you know, bake this into our button. And so we can reuse this all over the place and it's very easy and we don't have to think about it. 
So what we can do is we can actually create our own button here, which I'm going to call my button. So here I'm going to say my button. And we can have a button here, which we can have children. And then whatever props we want to pass on to our button here. And we can actually stick a use transition inside of here. So let's say we want four seconds to be our default here. And then we can have our start transition and is pending. And then what we can do is let's pluck out on click is on this buttons on click method. We can just wrap whatever the user decides to have for the on click with a start transition. And then we're going to put whatever the user wanted to actually do in the on click handler inside of here. And then we can handle the is pending state. So we can disable the button whenever we're loading. And we can either put it inside the button or we could put it next to it. And again, this could be any UI that we wanted to actually build to show a loading indicator. So here I can say is pending, display this div, otherwise display null. So now I have this my button component, which is going to automatically um, transition and show a loading indicator. And we can reuse this component all over the place. And it's going to be really handy. So now we can very cleanly do this. We can get rid of our use transition here and this and this. So now we just have to say, my button and we don't have to worry about you know handling transition stuff it's going to automatically wrap all the on click calls that we do in the transition and so we can get you know really nice reusability here uh, so let's see this in action now so here i come over compress this we can see we're loading and then we go to the next state whenever the data is actually loaded in uh, and again we could play with the timeout if we want to get it to a place that we like it. So maybe two seconds here and press refresh data loading and then it comes in. Uh, now we could probably also, if you want to take this timeout as a parameter to our button as well, if we want to can, you know, change that in a conditional way. So that's, I think is a pretty cool way to make use transition really usable all over your application is making a component like this. So that was a cool tip that I learned from the React docs and I think it's pretty handy. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is one thing that I actually don't know how to do with the use transition. So uh, for example, take a look at this number. This, this guy here takes, well actually let's click on it. I don't know how long it takes. I have it set to take three seconds to actually load. And then the person loads really fast. It loads in probably under one second. Now you'll notice when I click refresh data, it loads here and then it shows uh, here. What I'd really like to be able to accomplish is if my person finishes loading first, I'd like to start displaying the person data. If my number finishes uh, loading first, I'd like to uh, load, you know, show the number right away. So instead of having to wait a max of three seconds, right? So if I match this timeout and I click this, I don't see any information until they're both loaded. Instead, what I'd like to accomplish, I don't know how to do this yet with use transition. It probably is possible is when I click refresh data, I want it whenever one of these is done loading, um, it displays it. it basically, I don't want to wait for both of them. I just want to have the first one that's done. I go ahead and display information for that. And so I don't know the best way to split these up. I was thinking, you know, I was experimenting with like sticking the suspense up here like this. And we press this. Um, but all the uh, variations that I tried, it always waits for all of the suspense updates 
to actually be done. And so I only want to wait on a single suspense to be done. And maybe there's this component called suspense list, and maybe I'm going to need to use that to actually accomplish this. Uh, but we're going to get into suspense list in a future video. Uh, that is your introduction to using the use transition hook.